Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette. Here with the recap of the Holder Clashers War. And uh, it was a victory for us. Got it by a two-star margin. And uh, some really uh, great stuff for our clan that occurred in this war. Mainly the Town Hall 9s, uh, which is something that surprisingly we don't see very much. And this isn't just in Genesis. This is in a lot of high-level war clans that I've seen at least. Is the Town Hall 9s aren't clearing all the... Uh, Town Hall 9's on the other side, which is kind of weird because you'd think that with Bowlers and Valks and all that stuff you have access to at Town Hall 9, you'd be able to get the uh, three star easier, but for whatever reason, it's just something that I've been seeing, uh, especially in our clan, but we had plenty of attacks to spare. There were scouts for almost every one of these top bases, uh, so that really helped us, so great job to our Town Hall 9's. Um, as far as the war went overall, they did a good job in our 11s. They got the three star on Vicious and then the two stars on up top. Uh, they weren't able to get uh, that kind of top half of top. Uh, really, all, that's all our Town Hall 10s actually, I think. I don't think they got one Town Hall 10 three star now that I look at it closer because Fahim is the first Town Hall 9, I believe. Um, so anyway, they weren't quite uh, able to get done up on the 10s, but uh, they got all the 9s taken care of. As far as what we did, we actually left one of their 11s one star, unfortunately. And one thing I want to mention is they actually didn't use one of their attacks. Their number three here uh, didn't use his attack. So there was no potential to get an extra two stars, only an extra one star in one of these bases. So it wouldn't have made a difference, but it could have been 84 instead of 83. Uh, so just a quick uh, little note there. But anyway, um, besides uh, the 11s, no three stars there, but... We got pretty much all the 10s 3 star except for that one base which got away from us. Uh, so great job to our 11s and also uh, one of our Town Hall 10s who stepped up for a 3 star because mainly we're seeing Town Hall 11 dip attacks. But I'll go into more detail in just a moment. We're going to start at number 1 because it was a Town Hall 9 stepping up and getting a Town Hall 11 taken out. Something that uh, is so crucial if it can get done. And uh, you can see the Infernos are a little bit offset on this base. Not a whole lot, but I mean by offset, I mean they're not guarding the Town Hall from that bottom right side as much. So it kind of opens up for some dragons. Uh, this is a single Zap Quake. So he's just going to take out one of the air defenses with his uh, Zap Quake combo. Dropping down a few minions just to get uh, some of the trash bones taken out. There go the heroes. Just the goal there is that one air defense. So... Uh, little bit of percentage over there, drop down some minions. Um, I would have brought a few archers if I was him because those are also good ways to get percentage. Uh, so anyway, the CC troops come out, but the heroes take care of the air defense and they'll get like an archer tower too. Out come the CC troops, which is a dragon and a few balloons. Um, sorry about that. I should turn off my notifications, but I never do. I don't know why. Anyway, the dragon's making their way in. Uh, only the CC dragon's going to be an issue, not the balloons. Uh, so his own dragons will take that out. The eagle has activated, but it's not going to do a ton of damage to the dragons, um, especially if they stay a little bit spread out. Uh, it'll be difficult for it to take them out too quickly. Anyway, though, they are in range of some of these uh, infernos and the wizard towers, but uh, those level 4 dragons under rage actually mow through the infernos pretty... Or not the inferno, the town hall pretty quickly. So they get that taken out, and... Uh, Luckily, a few went to the outside, which is easier to get percentage out there. So those few at the top will get that DE drill, and uh, they'll get the cannon right there at the bottom. So uh, not you know the highest level uh, two star, but any two star by a Town Hall nine on a Town Hall eleven is just awesome. So fifty three percent, great job to Amsterdam. That opens things up so much because now we have Town Hall eleven and Town Hall ten attacks uh, to be used for three star purposes. So awesome stuff there. Good job, dude. Uh, let's take a look. We're not going to show any of the dips because I was thinking about it, but we've seen so many, you know, mass bowler attacks, and that's mainly what they were, that I only want to show the Town Hall 10 taking out the Town Hall 10 because uh, the rest were dips by our Town Hall 11s. So we're going to take a look at Thor, who's just been crushing it lately with his, uh, his Town Hall 10 attacks and only has the level 30 king, so not even maxed heroes, but he's been great lately. Uh, as far as three stars go. So anyway, uh, dropping down the queen, uh, like I said, you know, might as well get a little bit of value, do a mini queen walk there. Uh, helps funnel the bowlers and also gets a little bit, a uh, few defenses taken out usually. So uh, all good stuff there. There go the bowlers on the other side with the few healers on them. Uh, and it's best if you can get those bowlers to actually meet up with your main group. Otherwise, they'll walk, they'll, uh, walk around the base and the healers will never get onto the main group. So 
Uh, has a bit of a wall breaker feel, but an awesome adjustment by dropping that jump. Uh, and they do get through the wall eventually, but make sure those bowlers go inside the base because otherwise they might have wrapped around. So good adjustment with that jump. Everything's making its way through. Has the freeze, the rages, that second jump to let everything keep moving. Um, not the best base, to be honest, because the Infernos were pretty easy to get. Um, but still, it's always difficult to three-star a Town Hall 10, especially one that's you know mid-level like this. So the bowlers kind of make their way through the base. The healers do kind of peel off onto the queen, uh, but the main group is still pretty strong there. Has about a good solid 10 bowlers in it. Uh, they'll get through this wall here and take out a few more buildings. Meanwhile, the queen making her way up north, and she's pretty OP, a level 40 queen with all those healers on her and only some Town Hall 9 and uh, early Town Hall 10 point defense left up with a few splash damage. So not a whole lot left for this base. We'll go ahead and go times four because there's not a whole lot left to see. Um, the bowlers make their way through at the bottom. The queen at the top pops her ability. Uh, this thing's over a minion to help clean up. Awesome attack to Thor. Uh, the only Town Hall 10 to triple another Town Hall 10. So uh, good stuff there. All right, let's just go ahead and get to the Town Hall 9s. Because I want to show quite a few. Uh, you guys are going to see some stuff that I'm just started seeing myself. It's not something that, uh, well, it's, it's something that's being used, but it's I haven't shown it much on the channel. Uh, this one is just kind of a, uh, not nothing too new here, but it was a good attack, so I wanted to show it. Uh, we're looking at Bender on ten and uh, has a few baby dragons. Not quite the full on, uh, whatever people call it, the Valk baby dragon. So there's some word where they combine both of them, but not quite the full-on uh, Valk baby dragon combo uh, that you see at Town Hall 9 sometimes, but has a number of baby dragons for different funneling purposes. Also getting defenses, like look right there. Uh, baby dragon gets the cannon, awesome value. Uh, they, they're pretty good, just utility troops to get some good value on the outside of a base. Not very good for entering in any big groups because there's the uh, times two buff that they lose when they get near other baby dragons, but... On their own, they're pretty powerful, so it uh, goes ahead and brings a few of them here for funneling, like I said. Uh, the queen takes out that golem. I love that wizard. Um, people don't do it enough, but it just speeds everything up. Extra damage. I mean, it does almost as much damage as the queen, uh, so just having that wizard there really helps out and uh, keeps her moving, saves time, which is very important at Town Hall 9. Drops in these Valks and these bowlers behind. Um, a CCMX max bowlers really goes well with any ground composition. Whether you're bringing Valks or Golems or pretty much anything, uh, HGHB, uh, throw some bowlers in behind it and it really adds a lot of value. Add some more range to the attack. Um, very strong at Town Hall 9. I'm actually surprised we're not seeing Miners at Town Hall 9. People bringing CCs at level 4 Miners. Uh, maybe just, I don't know, doesn't complement some attacks as much, but I'd actually expect to see that too. Uh, maybe people will start using that at some point. But anyway, uh, everything moving through the base, getting spread out here. Kind of what we're seeing at Town Hall 9, the new thing is not predicted pathing, more of just getting the right troops inside the base and letting them go wherever they want to go. Um, not a, it, it's, I don't want to say it's getting towards spam attacks because it's not. It's still you know using different troops, a combination of different stuff. Still takes a lot of planning, but we're not seeing the... Uh, planned pathing within the base, I guess is what I'm saying. It's a lot more kind of improvised as you go, which in a way might even take more skill because you have to be able to think on the fly um, and send in your hogs and your baby dragons uh, based on where your bowlers and your heroes go. So it's something that's cool at Town Hall 9 and uh, adding a new dimension to the game. So anyway, awesome attack to Bender. Getting the three star, go ahead and fast forward. Has the king's ability, goes ahead and double swags the poison. Uh, awesome stuff. All right, let's go ahead and move down just one to 11. Uh, no Z, I think is how you say that, or Noxy, uh, either one, but uh, might be a new member, I don't recognize his name, but comes in here uh, with a nice trade there. Uh, the, the, the defender went ahead and put a bomb on the, uh, the cannon, but has a second minion to drop down and uh, gets the free cannon there for only the four troop space. This guy also has some troll Teslas, so pretty troll stuff on the outside of this base, but uh, I'll call him Noxy, I guess. Uh, Noxy's bringing uh, quite a few golems. This is another new thing that I'm seeing. Maybe it's not new. I'm just saying it's new that I've been seeing, uh, new to me. It's a kind of like a three golems, like a stoned bowler attack. Just There's a lot of rocks in this base, whether it's the ones the bowlers are holding or the huge ones that take up 30 uh, troop space out in front. Just a lot of rocks going through this base. 
uh, so golems and bowlers. Everything moving through has nice poison, and really just entering the base strong with that has some balloons and some hogs, so kind of some defense targeting troops around the outside of the base. Not sure if you missed the king's ability, I kind of missed that, um, but the king did go down pretty quickly. Regardless though, the bowlers are sitting back behind the golems, has that next rage, which isn't going to get a whole lot of value, but at least uh, keeps those golems moving and adds their damage a little bit. Has the nice haste for those balloons because all the air defenses are going down right there. Last two go down. Um, some hogs on the side, just a real nice attack, very technical. And the balloons start going down because there's some Teslas, a lot of unfriendly stuff for those balloons. But the hogs are making their way through. There's still a bunch of, um, a number of uh, bowlers and also some golems left up. So gets through the rest of the space with the queen still has her ability and a few cleanup troops so anyway uh times two and times four nice attack uh to noxy and also welcome to the clan if you're new had just not a familiar name so anyway uh let's go ahead and keep moving we have two more to show uh both very cool attacks to watch so let's get right to those and then at the end of the video i kind of have a cool type announcement thing just something to look forward to uh this week it, um, I'll, I'll get to it in a moment, but let's go ahead and take a look at the last two attacks. Uh, we have Warlord, and he's doing more of the kind of similar to ben, uh, Bender's attack, but has the 10 baby dragons instead of like three or four. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to when it starts right there. Uh, starts in with the baby dragons, a few wizards, creating some funnels. Um, but this is basically what we've been seeing. Sometimes people bring healers for the Valks, I think. Just like two healers for them. He goes ahead and elects not to on this attack, but works out just fine either way. Uh, but all he has is, are the wizards, the baby dragons, and uh, the Valks that he brought. The CC lure right there, everything empties on out. Um, so let's stand for a moment, and then I believe he's going to pull it off to the side. Uh, in the, or actually just poison it, drop down the heroes. Uh, works out just fine. The CC troops won't be much of an issue. Another CC of bowlers, like I said, it works well with almost every attack. Uh, they do go to the outside here, which happens a lot, but they'll still get some good value either way. And uh, the Valks making their way through, they kind of split right there. But um, the main thing is that they're going to get through, get some of these air defenses taken out, uh, so these baby dragons can get some more value. But anyway, the Queen's still moving through. The Valks kind of start going to the outside. But the uh, baby dragon takes out that building, which keeps them inside the base. That's something that I like about this strategy is that the Valks are kept inside the base by these baby dragons. So they get in there, they get that next air defense taken out. Still has two heals for them, so uh, just kind of dropping the, those baby dragons uh, alongside the Valks on the outside of the base, getting some of those defenses taken out. And like I said, I, I was skeptical, skeptical on this attack. I'm not sure... Uh, how good of a strategy it is and I'm still a little skeptical as to how much value the baby dragons really get but I guess they keep the Valks inside the base which is more important than you might think so um, I I'm still kind of on the fence about it but I'll let you guys know and maybe we'll see some more attacks with it right here the baby dragons do kind of clump up and hit some air traps but uh, still has actually quite a few Valks and just used the king's ability now his queen did go down but has another baby dragon and those things are actually pretty deadly uh, once all the air defenses are down, especially when they're kind of spread out. Uh, right here, they kind of group up on these last few Teslas. They go down, and that is going to be it. Awesome attack to Warlord. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last attack. Okay, 28, going all the way down here to poor self-control. And had to show an HGHB. You guys weren't going to get away without it. Um just because it's so popular right now, had quite a few attacks, not exclusively. Um, actually, I think they were a lot more dependent on this than we were. We had some more diversity, which you saw in some of the previous attacks, uh, but still quite a few of these used by us in this war because uh, it's a very popular thing. I liked how we did two different streams of giants and then had the meet up in the middle just to do some a wider funnel, uh, which is very important for those bowlers because if you drop all your giants in the same place, the funnel is going to be a lot narrower and the boulders might not enter the base. So very good technical stuff there. As you can see, once again, no jumps because you want to let everything clump up and get the splash heal of the healers, especially when they're under rage. I actually worked out nicely because one boulder went to the outside and the wizard, they'll keep everything inside the base. Uh, so that's awesome there. Next rage goes down. Uh, the healers are taking quite a bit of damage from that air defense. And you can see he actually didn't go at the queen. 
a lot of times people start their uh, HGHB attack on the queen compartment, but this guy, uh, the base defender, put a little moat right there to try to uh, screw that up, and uh, that's what you're seeing. I'm actually gonna probably make a video on how to do an anti-HGHB base, because it's something that's being so, uh, it's being used so much right now. I wanna help you guys out with your bases if you're a Town Hall 9, so sit tight, I'll get that out soon. Uh, but anyway, that's one of the things we're seeing is kind of these moats and these islands to try to screw up giant pathing. It's all about the pathing, and uh, hopefully I can make a video pretty soon because I have some things to say about that. But anyway, as far as this attack goes, it doesn't matter a whole lot that he didn't go at the queen because everything's going to converge either way. Um, he, there's some pretty actually sneaky double giant bomb sets this guy had. His hogs kind of hit it uh, a little bit. Um, it was enough to kill all his hogs, though. Uh, but still, all those giants are still left up. Uh, the queen really has no chance against them, has the poison, and she's not going to do much under the poison, especially to those giants, which are under heal. Um, so crush this base. Still has three hogs left. Um, just look at how many troops he has left, though, to be honest. Uh, both his heroes, both of their abilities, um, all those giants, the wizards, the bowlers, three hogs, and their wizard left to deploy. Goes ahead and uses his uh, hero's ability just for fun. Uh, but this one is over. We'll go ahead and fast forward to the end. Crush this base. Um, really nice attack by poor self-control. Uh, getting redemption from that live uh, video. I did an alpha a few wars back. Um, so that was good there. Anyway, though, I did mention I have a quick uh, little update. On my second account, uh, just a little preview. I'm in the swarm for my next clan drifter video. And... Uh, they're going up with, they're in a war with North Three members, I believe. Um, so it's going to be a really exciting war, and I should be covering that in the uh, Clan Drifter video. I'll probably just make it exclusively on that war, because there should be some awesome attacks. Two very, very high-level clans going at it. So you guys will see a lot from that war. Uh, should be a lot of fun, and uh, I'll do my best to get it all contained in the Clan Drifter video. So anyway, though, thanks for watching this one. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the recap against Holder Clashers. Very good clan. It was a fun war, and hopefully a war range one again in the future. Wish I could have been a part of it, but couldn't quite fit on the roster. Still had a good time with the 2014 attack uh, throwback war in uh, Reddit Legacy. But anyway, uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching this one. Bisect Toronto.